This is our Samsung Galaxy AL2S for beginners, part two. Welcome back to another video. I am your tech guide, Wayne. And if you find this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button down below, tap the subscribe button and consider tap the notification bell so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. This video is a follow-up to our Samsung Galaxy AO2S for beginners. We're gonna be going over more beginner tips for you guys to learn how to use this phone. And let me start off by just apologizing because in my original video, AO2S for beginners, I forgot to go over how to make calls and send text messages. So please forgive me for missing that at the tail end of the video. I'm gonna be covering that at the beginning of this video and moving into some other really useful information you need to know. So some of the things you can expect to learn in this video are um, how to set up your email account, how to connect to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, um, saving contacts to your phone, changing wallpapers, moving and deleting apps, things uh, in that category. So that's what this video is gonna focus on. And let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So first, um, let's go over how to make a call and also how to uh, answer the phone when someone is calling you. So the first thing, if you wanna make a call, you're gonna tap on the green button at the bottom here. It'll take you to the, the dialer. You have three options down here. You have keypad, recent calls and contacts. So if you have a phone number and you wanna dial it, you just simply type it in on this screen here. Um, so let's type in number now. So I'm typing in a phone number with the area code and I'm just gonna tap the green button to initiate the call. And that will start the phone making the call. Now this phone doesn't have a SIM card in it right now, so uh, it won't actually make a call, but that is the process to make a call. If you tap on recent, this will show you all the people that have called you recently. And sometimes it's easy to call someone back just by going to the recent call and just tapping on their phone number. Um, you can also access your contacts from here by tapping contacts. And in here, we're gonna learn how to save a contact to your phone. Now I'm gonna, let's pause this here and I have a similar Samsung phone, it works exactly the same as the AL2S, but I just wanna show you when someone calls you how you're gonna answer the phone. So let's keep that phone here. Again, these models are identical, they work exactly the same. And I'm just gonna initiate a call. This one has service, so that's why I have to use that one to demonstrate this next feature here. So let's start the call, and then you can see exactly what you need to do to answer it. So call is going through. You're gonna see it pop on the screen. Take your finger, put it on the green little call icon, put it there and just drag it. And that's gonna answer the call for you. And then if you'd like to put the call on speakerphone, just tap on speaker and then uh, you can hear them without holding the phone right to your ear. When you want to end the call, you just simply tap on the red button and that will stop the call just like that. Really easy. Now, I wanna go over one other scenario, and this is if someone is calling you and you don't wanna pick up the phone, you can decline the call the same way. So I'm gonna call the phone again. And this time, if you don't wanna answer, you're just gonna drag your finger, you're gonna put it on the red phone and then drag it across the screen and that's gonna decline the call so you don't have to answer it. And that's it. That's how you would answer, or that's how you would decline a call that's coming in that you don't wanna uh, answer. So how to make a call, how to answer the phone. And next I'm gonna go over um, how to save a contact to your phone. So maybe you wanna save a family member in your phone so you can call them or a friend. It's really easy. Now remember we're in the phone app here. I'm gonna go out of it just by hitting our home button here. We're gonna go back to the phone again, the green phone button. Remember we have our three options, keypad, recent, and we are in the contact section. And we're gonna go to the plus right here to add a new contact. And the first thing it'll ask you to do is to um, put in the name. So we can put Joe um, Leonard. 
not a real person, obviously. And then we're gonna tap on phone to enter their phone number. And then if they have multiple numbers, you can add uh, other numbers. So I can tap here and put in like a, a different phone number. Notice this one says mobile. This one says home. You can always tap where it says mobile and you can change it and say, oh, that's his work number. And that's his cell number or his mobile. That's how you would change the classification on what that number is. You could also tap on email to add an email address for them. And uh, at the bottom here, if you tap on view more, it'll allow you to add even more information. So if you wanted to add their address, you can tap on address, put that in there. You can um, add any important dates, notes, websites, or any other accounts that they have can all be linked in here. You can also tap on ringtone and you could actually assign them a special ringtone so that you would know when that specific person is calling. You can go in and say, hey, you know what? When they call, I want to hear this sound. You can just tap. Usually you tap and you can hear the sound, but I guess they might've changed that. But you can assign a different sound for when they call, so you'll always know when that person is calling. Okay. And when we're finished, we're just gonna tap on save right here. And now we have our contact saved in our phone, Joe Leonard. Okay. Now, uh, I would also encourage you to hit the favorite button if they're gonna be uh, someone you call frequently and it just makes it easier for you to find their number later because the favorites will always be pushed to the very top of the contact section. So if you have a lot of contacts in here, any that you have marked as a favorite will show up at the top of the contact section. Okay, now we're gonna go home. So we've gone over making calls, we've gone over saving your contact. Now we're gonna go over how to send a text message. So you're gonna tap on this little blue icon right next to the phone. This is the Messages app. And to start a new message, you're gonna simply tap on this icon here that will create a new message. And if you already have the person saved in your phone, you can simply just type their name and it will pull their contact out of your phone contact. So I'm gonna type in Joe. And as you can see, there's Joe right there, Joe Leonard, I'm gonna tap. So now my message is going to Joe, and then I'm gonna tap in the little box down here and type my message. Happy Monday. And you always have your autocorrect here, so if you type the wrong thing, you can usually see it autocorrected here and just tap and it'll fix it. Happy Monday. And then you can hit this button to send the message. Okay. Now, one other important thing to note, let's say you took a picture in your phone and you want to send that picture in your message. You're going to tap on the little picture icon to the far left right here. And I can grab this picture right here. Just tap on it. You'll see the circle light up and then we're gonna hit the send button. You can also select more than one picture. Um, you usually can't send a lot, but you can send a couple of pictures. So we'll do three here. And then I can still type a message by tapping in this box. You can say, look at my pictures. And then hit the button here to send it. And now you've just sent a, a text message with pictures and with a little message. Look at my pictures, just like that. So that's how you send a message. And now when you go back to the Messages app, it's gonna keep that conversation going right here. So if you ever wanna text them again later, you just tap on that message and you continue to keep the conversation going. You're also gonna have a phone button up here, so if in the, Middle of you texting them, you decide, let me just call. I can probably explain this better over the phone. You can tap on the phone button here and then it will initiate a call to that person. So that's how you would send a text message. Let's hit our home button to go back to our main screen. Now for our next tip, we're gonna go over how to connect to Wi-Fi. So if you have wireless internet at home, it's always encouraged for you to connect to your Wi-Fi network because 
Wi-Fi tends to be faster than the uh, connection through your provider. You also could be on a uh, capped data plan through your cell phone provider. And so you don't want to waste um, your data amount for the month. Instead, connect to your home Wi-Fi or to a Starbucks Wi-Fi or a restaurant. Or you could be at someone's house and you want to connect to their network. This is just recommended so you're not using up your data if it's not unlimited. So swipe down from the top of the screen. You'll have this icon in the upper left corner. This is your Wi-Fi shortcut. And by simply tapping it, you can turn it on and off. So if I tap it again, it's gonna turn it on. And then if I hold down on it, it's gonna take me to the settings where I can actually connect to a network. So I'm gonna hold down on it. Just put your finger on it and don't move it until you see the screen move. And it'll take you to here, which is the uh, settings where you'll be able to see all of the available Wi-Fi networks. So for example, if you were at Starbucks, you'd wanna look for the one that says Starbucks, and then you would just simply tap on it, and then you would have to enter the password for that network. And maybe the password is cup of coffee. You would type in cup of coffee, and then hit done, and then um, it would begin to try to connect to that network. If you're at home or at someone's house, you just say, hey, what's, your, what's the name of your Wi-Fi network? I wanna connect to it. And they'll say, oh, look for the one that says, you know, happy Tuesday. And my password is, it's Wednesday, silly, whatever. And then you'll connect to it, put the password, and now you're on their Wi-Fi. You will know if you have successfully connected because you should see this. It'll say current network. It'll light up in blue and it'll say connected right there. If you don't see that, it means that you are not connected to the Wi-Fi. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. So that's how you connect to a Wi-Fi network. Next, here is how you connect to a Bluetooth device. Maybe you have Bluetooth headphones or a Bluetooth speaker or a Bluetooth keyboard that you'd like to connect to. Really easy, it's a similar process. It's swiping down from the top of the screen. Right here, this is the Bluetooth symbol. Once again, you tap it to turn it on. And if it's lit up in blue, it means that your Bluetooth is turned on. Currently, as you can see, it's not lit up in blue, it's gray. That means that it's turned off. So first I wanna tap it just to turn it on. And in this case, it, it actually took us right to the settings. So sometimes it'll do that. If you turn it on, it will launch the settings and it'll start looking for different networks to connect to. So, um, but just to show you, in case it doesn't do that, all you'll need to do is just put your finger on it and don't move it until you see the screen change. And now we're in the Bluetooth settings where we can connect to a Bluetooth device. So for headphones, um, usually uh, the packaging will tell you, this is the process to put your device in what's called pairing mode. So in this case, I have these Beats um, wireless headphones here. And so for these, all you need to do is just open the case and opening the case automatically puts it in pairing mode but sometimes that won't work if they're already connected to a device. So in this case, there's a little white button in the center. I can just hold down on that button until this light starts to blink. So watch this, I'm just gonna hold down on it and you'll see this little light, it's gonna start flashing. And that's how you know now it is in the pairing mode, see? And now it shows up on our screen and I'm able to tap connect. Now, all Bluetooth devices won't look this way. They will look different. Uh, some headphones, they'll just show up in the list. And once you see the name in the list, you're gonna tap it, and that's how it's gonna connect. Um, sometimes you won't see anything in this list, and you'll have to tap the scan button. And the scan is just telling the phone, hey, start looking for new Bluetooth devices and then it should start catching all the other Bluetooth devices that are in the area. So the important thing you need to know is make sure your Bluetooth device is turned on and you have put it in the pairing mode first and then tap the scan button at the top and then find your device in the list 
tap on it and that should allow them to connect pretty easy. So that is the process to connect to a Bluetooth device. And uh, I'll have a link below in the description with some Bluetooth speakers and other Bluetooth devices you can connect that will work great with your phone. So make sure you go down to the description of the video and make sure you check out that as well. Okay, so moving on, now we're gonna talk about how to set up your email address on your phone. Some of you guys may have one email address, some of you guys may have a lot. Um, I'm gonna show you some different methods on how to do this. Um, so in the previous video, I did go over like how to set up your uh, Google account or Gmail. So you may already have your Gmail on the phone, but you might have another email address aside from Gmail. And so I wanna show you how to add that. Now, we're gonna be using the Gmail app primarily to do this. I know you're saying, well, what if, I don't, what if my other email is not a Gmail? That's okay, just follow me. So uh, swipe up to tap on your Google folder and go to the Gmail app. So one of the cool things that people don't know about Gmail is that you can add other uh, accounts aside from Google and Gmail accounts. You just need to tap add another email address and it will take you to this section and this will show you all of the other accounts that you can add. So if you have an Outlook, uh, a Hotmail, a Live, a Yahoo, a Ymail, or any type of Office 360 email account, you can add it just tapping on the appropriate option. There's also an other option to manually add email accounts. Some of you guys may have like a work email and you may have an IT person, they might use the other to add your email account. So you've got a few different options here. Um, if you had a Yahoo, you would just simply tap on Yahoo and you would type in the email address uh, and then you'll type in the password and then it'll sign you right into your account. And if you forgot your password, you just type in the email address, type in forgot password or forgot username and then it'll walk you through the steps on how to recover your password. So it's really that easy to sign into your email account. Now, some of you guys may have an AOL, like myself, I have an old AOL that I used years ago. Well, guess what? There's no option for AOL here. So in that case, I'd have to do this. I'm gonna hit the home button and I'm gonna to go to the Play Store app. And in the Play Store, I'm gonna to need to look for a separate email app that just does AOL. So I'm gonna to come to the top, tap in the box here and type in AOL. Hit the little search button there. And AOL has their own app that I can do mail. And I'm just gonna tap install and I'm gonna open it up. And the first thing it's gonna ask me is to put in my email address and my password. And, and then it's gonna sign me right into my AOL account. Now, if you have some other email that I haven't mentioned in the video, no problem. Um, you'll just tap on the magnifying glass. This is the easiest way to do it. Um, type in, so you know when it says at da da da, you can just type in at. Some of you may have like an at SBC global. You can type that in dot net and then hit search. And this will actually recommend other email apps that will work with that email address. So this is showing you the Yahoo mail app will work with it. My AT&T will also work. All of these other apps here will be compatible with that email type. So that's how you would search if you don't see your email option on the list in the Gmail app, just go to the Play Store and just type at in the end of your email address and that will help you find an appropriate app that will work. Feel free to leave a comment below if you still are struggling with it and I'll try to help you out with it if I see the comment. Um, but uh, all the things I've mentioned should provide you with one option that will work for you. Moving on to our next section, I'm gonna be going over how to move the apps on the screen and a very useful tip on how to keep the apps from moving after you have set them how you like them. So uh, first of all, if you wanna move one of these icons on the screen, it's really easy to do it. Uh, let's say the Galaxy Store, you never use this and you don't want it to be on your home screen. 
You're just gonna take your finger and just put it on the app and hold down. And this pop-up is gonna show up. The app is gonna start jumping. And I have two options here. I can select it or I can remove it. So if I tap remove, it's gonna make the app disappear from the home screen. If I swipe up, it's still gonna be there. It's right there, but I don't have to see it on the home screen. So that's one important just little trick in case you wanna get rid of things that are on the screen that you really don't wanna see. And let's say there is something you do want to be on the screen. Maybe you have Facebook and you say, I'd love it if Facebook was just right here on the home screen because I use that. All you're gonna do is swipe up, you're gonna hold down on Facebook, but keep your finger on it even after you see the menu. And as you can see, it took a second, but it took us right to the home screen. And now I can drag Facebook down and I can let it go. And now Facebook will always be right there. So that's how you move an app to the home screen versus deleting an app. You can also, for example, this folder here, maybe you like what's in here, but you don't want it to be on the home screen. Hold down on it and then move your finger to the right and then let it go. And that's how you move it over one screen. You can have multiple screens that have different things on them. So your main home screen doesn't have that folder, but if you swipe to the left, it's on that screen. So that's how you move the apps between the screens. Now, once you've finished moving everything and you say, you know what, I love how this is set up and I don't want it to move at all. Here's what you do. Take your finger, find a spot on the screen that doesn't have an app or anything and just hold down. That's gonna bring up this other menu and you're gonna tap on settings. And here we're gonna go to lock home screen layout. Once you lock it, this is gonna make all the apps stop uh, or uh, make the apps not have the ability to move. So if I try to hold down on Facebook and move it, guess what? I can't move it. It's locked. Nothing on here is going to move. Everything that is there is there and it can't be moved unless I go back to settings and I unlock it. So this is a real useful tweak to make once you have the phone set up exactly how you like it and you don't want it to move, guess what? It can't move, it's done. It is locked in place just like that. So definitely encourage you guys to make that tweak. And the, the last thing I wanna show you is how do you change the wallpaper, which is the picture in the background of your phone here. Now, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take a picture and I, I didn't show this in the first video, but you'll love this. If you tap your power button two times, it'll actually take you right to the camera. And so that's, you know, it's that easy to get right to the camera. And I'm gonna switch the camera. Right now the camera is facing me and I want it to face the other way. So just tap this button here. I'm gonna take a picture of this little um, flower here or this little leaf. By the way, if you want to take a picture, just tap on the little circle. If you want to take a video, tap video. And now you're going to hit the red button to record. That's how you take pictures and videos. Okay, we're going to tap our home button here. And now we want to make the picture that we just took. We now want to make that our wallpaper background so that we can see that every time we open our phone. You're gonna take your finger, find a spot on the screen that doesn't have an app or anything, hold down, tap on wallpapers, and then tap on gallery. And it will take us right to our camera folder. So just tap on the folder here. And let's say I want this to be my new wallpaper. Now maybe for you, this is a picture of you and a family member um, cool. Just tap on it. Make sure the little check in the corner is, is lit up. Hit done. It's going to ask you, do you want your home screen changed or the home screen and the lock screen? The lock screen is what you see when you turn the phone on. I'm going to do both lock and home screen. And then it's going to show you what it's going to look like and just hit set or set on lock screen and home screen, and then go home. Oh, 
oh, there we go. It just took a second to update. And now my new wallpaper is the picture that I just took. So that's how you change your background picture to be whatever you want it to be. You have some other options too. If you hold down the screen again, go back to wallpaper and you tap on my wallpapers. There are some uh, wallpapers that do come with the phone. If you just want to pick something generic, you can go through here and say, oh, you know, I like, uh, I like this one. That one's pretty cool too. Same thing, lock and home screen. Tap set, set on lock screen and home screen, and then the home button, and now it'll change the wallpaper. So that's how you change that background image to be whatever you want it to be. So this has been our part two to how to use the Samsung Galaxy AL2S for beginners. I hope you guys found this helpful. Again, my apologies for missing the end of the first video, but I did want to do a follow up, give you guys some more information and just continue to educate you on how to use your phone. I do recommend you check out this video right here and this video right here. You're gonna find some other really useful tips on how to use this phone. So definitely tap and check out those videos as well. Thanks for watching, take care, and as always, have a good one.